Hi, this is Didi Garcia Blaze. You are listening to the Que Onda Show on the Chicano Onda. Radio Network. And with me is a talented actor and stuntman. And uh, he's multi-talented, not just limited to that. His name is JT Campos. I want to introduce him to the world. Hello, world. Be careful because I'm coming. I want to thank you, JT, for being my first guest on the Chicano Radio Network on the brand new Que Onda show, a show that will revitalize the Chicano movement and shine the light to Mexican-American Chicanos in, in the arts. And I, I just want to sort of tell my listener that I believe you're one of those talented individuals. I see you not o- not only as an actor, or a stuntman. I, I, I view you as a type of Chicano, Mexican-American Adam Sandler. Yeah, thank you. Well, hey, <laughs> you, yeah, I was able to uh, ride around with you and Izzy, and uh, <laughs> Izzy was playing the guitar. Yeah, and... those are some good times. I feel like they were just yesterday. Wait a minute, they kind of were, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> they kind of were just the other day. South by Southwest misses you, Didi. Uh, Austin, Texas misses you, and, and I miss you. I want to say thanks to, to just Tequila, period, man. I mean, I met you through Tequila, <laughs> and uh, that was just uh, friending you on Facebook over some things, and uh, I thought I was going to talk to you about other business negotiations, and here we are talking about acting and stunts. Uh, yeah, my career started back when on the set of the Alamo, way back when, and it actually began before that. I come from South Texas, Mission, Texas, home of Tom Landry, home of awesome Tex-Mex, Conjunto, Norteño, you know, <laughs> Mexicans, Chicanos, I think we're the only ones to play air accordion, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm really good at it. I'm so good at it. A great friend named Lupe Silva, may he rest in peace, turned me on to Esteban Jordan in the sense of turning me on to a story. He saw my long hair. He said, you know, if I gave you a patch on your on your right eye, uh, put an accordion in your hands, you would look just like Esteban Jordan. Do you know who that is? And I was like, Hayate, of course I know who that is. I'm from the <laughs> Valley, you know, Rio Grande Valley. <laughs> Thank you for, for for saying I'm multi-talented. I like to think I'm a jack of all trades, but master of none. I saw you on the first episode of American Crime, and, and oh, I yeah, likened American you. I, when I saw your part, it reminded me of... Antonio Banderas, when he played in that movie with uh, oh, Sylvester, Tennessee. right? It, uh, it, there was uh, a part that Antonio played with uh, Sylvester Stallone in a movie called Assassination or Assassins. It was a very intense part, you know, and, and he was very fidgety and intense. And the way that John Ridley portrayed you, it, it had that same vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. John Ridley did portray me that way, right? No, that wasn't me. You're right. Thank you, Axe. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, with the, with the, you know how he sort of uh, edited it, sort of kind of choppy? Kinda... Oh, yeah, he did a little choppy, choppy, chop suey edit there, and I kind of liked it because he, you heard my voice, and then you didn't see my mouth moving, then you saw me making certain movements and gestures. Yeah, there was a lot of intensity there. Hold on, hold on. Someone wants to say hi real quick, Didi. Can, can I put him on the phone? Sure. Hey, yo, D, how you doing, D? <laughs> I'm sorry, that was just me. I like doing voices. But now I was, I was just moved to, moved to just say hi, you know, so that's in a weird kind of way. Sorry. Well, no, no, I, I actually like Sylvester Stallone. I mean, and he's another hero of mine with what he did. Let me say that I've been working in this industry now for a, uh, quite a while. I've actually done a lot of things since I've come up from South Texas, from working in uh, radio in South Texas at KIWW, coming up to Austin, Texas, working in the juvenile boot camp environment, taking care of juvenile offenders, going back into radio, uh, working in radio. And while I was doing radio, I also worked for the medical examiner's office in Travis County, picking up the deceased for three and a half years, and then going uh, into film from there by cutting a commercial for the movie The Alamo asking for soldados to be in Santa Ana's army. Didn't you, you know, kill Davy like, Crockett? Yeah, I did kill Davy Crockett. I was actually going to say, you know, with the movement, with the movement <laughs> remember The Alamo, there's a lot of history that we're taught that really isn't the history that's true, you know, and you don't find that out till, till you know, you're sitting around those, uh, those dinner tables with, with your ancestors and you're hearing certain stories of, 
of yesteryear, and you're like, no, that can't be true. I didn't, I, I didn't learn that in school. And well, I, I won't go into the politics of things right now because I just, I don't want to go there with that. But um, yeah, it was very important for me to be on the set of the Alamo. I realized that yo voy a matar a Davy Crockett, <laughs> and I did, I did, I got to kill Davy Crockett. That's where my stunt stuntman career began. Uh, a little bit of history. Real quick and fast, my brother, Christopher Campos, who's a stuntman, um, worked on the, the movie with me. And he's the first Hispanic killed right before the onslaught by Davy Crockett. You know, Davy Crockett mm-hmm. summoned his violin on the set, and, you know, in the movie. And he hears something creeping up. He looks over the fence. He sees my brother and, boom, he shoots him down. At the end of the movie, I come back and I take a stab at Davy Crockett and execute him. And, you know, just beautiful little uh, trivia history there. Um but, I know you've played in a lot of movies with Robert Rodriguez. With regard to the Chicano movement, has it been your experience there in Austin, which I'm told is the number one filming location aside from Hollywood, have you seen more and more Chicanos get involved in the entertainment industry? And what are your Yeah, yeah. That? Actually, you know, actually, yeah, that's where it all began on the set of the Alamo. When I got on that movie, you, they mm-hmm. needed extras, right? We mm-hmm. had over 600 extras in the set of the Alamo, and they were all pretty much Mexicanos. So, like, Mexicanos, they came from everywhere to be on that movie, and we were on that set for, like, six months. For me, that movie saved my life, you know. I realized I was never going to have to go back to the to to the other side of the railroad tracks that I like to say and think sometimes that, that, that I come from because I come from South Texas. Yeah, you know, a lot of different things happen in South Texas. Todo se vale en el valle. And, uh, <laughs> uh, I lost we won't my go there. Father. Yeah, we won't go there right now. I lost my father when I was 10 years old. He died in a water heater explosion. My mother raised me and my brothers by by herself, you know. And, you know, the best thing I can say thank you to my mom for is giving me my carnales, you know. I, I had, I have brothers. Uh, my mom, she worked hard. She did what she did. And, man, I'm here today because of the woman she is and, and the man that she had to be as well. So, mom, I love you, man. I love you, Ma. That's it. I'm going to stop there. Let me say that working on that movie, six months on that set, yeah, I learned a lot. And I realized this is what I wanted. But having the opportunity to work with Mr. Rodriguez, Robert, Bob, whew, that's like film school 101. The stuff that you learn on a Robert Rodriguez movie, you know, from, I mean, that man is, is he, he broke the, he broke the way on a, he broke the mold on a lot. He did. He just. I'm going to write, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, what poner la luz, what says, you know, I'm going to make my music, I'm going to do this. todo, todo. Uh, the way he did it and the way he just laid down his his law was, he just showed you you don't need this and you don't need that to do exactly what you're going to do. If you say it, you can do it, be it. And, and he did it. Mm-hmm. So you walk away realizing, pues si él puede, pues yo también. Uh, like that famous song, you know, uh, the song that, that the network is, is named after El Rey, you know, Sigo Siendo El Rey, sin, sin La Reina, sin, without the castle, without the queen, I'm, without the throne, I'm still the king, you know. <laughs> Con dinero, sin dinero, yo hago lo que yo chingas quiero, right? So El Rey. I've, I've adapted that as well. I'm like, well, hey, Robert, I get it. I know what chingon is, uh, and I can live the chingon lifestyle. <laughs> so I've been doing it. And from working on Sin City to Sin City 2, uh, Machete, Machete Kills, Spy Kids 4. You know what, Machete? That movie Machete, I got to, mm-hmm. like, really, really do some stuff. I'm in the scene with Robert De Niro. I actually cut the ropes free. I, I I swing an axe, and I'm swinging it within inches of Mr. Robert De Niro. Okay, that could have ended my career, you know. Tragedy wow. struck the set of Troublemaker Studios today when Mr. Idiota Joseph Campos hit Robert De Niro. <laughs> it could have easily gone down that way. Mm-hmm. You know, especially when I realized exactly what I had to do to get there. Some other Mexicano was swinging an axe, and he, he couldn't swing an axe. I'm like, damn, this dude looks like a Mexicano Mexicano. He can't swing an axe. What do you mean he can't swing an axe? And I'm shaking my head in disgust, like, chihuahuas, que lastima, come on, carnal, swing the axe. I want it so bad for this brother, he just couldn't. And I shook my head in disbelief, and I remember Robert Rodriguez looking at me and asking, you think you can do better? Uh, I was like, yeah, I know I can. Uh, he mm-hmm. got the axe and he gave it to me. He said, let me see. And well, so it was the time to shine, right? It's Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> you don't want to look like a fool in front of him. Mm-hmm. And 
So there you go. I've made a little bit of history there. It was a real lax. I'm swinging it. And wow. wow. It's real lax. It's not a prop. Uh, well, it was a prop. It was a real handle. <laughs> it was a real handle with a, with a five pound. It looked like a real axe, right? It was like five pound, maybe five pound of heavy plastic. That come on, man, I would have still messed up, Mister Benel, yeah, if I hit him. And yeah. thank God that 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 I know what I'm doing. You know, many and many a stuntman. I want to say thank you to like Mark Chavarria, Victor Quintero, Eric Norris, Jeff Jeff Swan, Jeff Wolf. Gosh, JJ Dashnaw. There's just actually too many to name. Honestly, I want to just thank the stuntman and women association for just being there, taking me under their wing. I want to thank thank the first stunt stuntman that ever really took me under their wing, Phil Nielsen and Keith Willard on the set of the Alamo, just seeing something on me and um, seeing my heart. They always told me I had heart, you know. I see that. I saw. I saw that. Uh, you know when, you know when I was in Austin visiting during South by Southwest week, definitely I saw you work with the passion, and everywhere we went, it seemed like somebody knew you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I really appreciate that because I've I've been putting in some serious work. I've been putting in some, I've been laying groundwork, man, for a little while now, and I've been fortunate enough to not only be on American Crime, but like I've been on Prison Break season two. I was on Chase, Killer Women. Uh, I just worked on an HBO TV series, uh, Mama Dallas. Been in HEB commercials, Toyota commercials, Chevy commercials. I've I've been I've been chipping away at it for, for a long time and I, I want to say thanks for like acknowledging me and really giving me extra pay, you know, hearing me because it, it really is an honor and a pleasure to be talking to you, Dee. Just seriously, your energy is like whew, I love it. It's off the off the charts, I think. And uh, Thank you. Don't don't you think though that the time is now for something for like Mexicanos? this, too. Yes, <laughs> for, for Chicanos and, yeah, Mexican-American Chicano, Chicanos. Yeah. For the music, for the arts, for the film. Uh, there are certain directors out there. I've got a lot of friends, you know, uh, Richard Scribal, Izzy Marquez. Uh, I've got myself. i got a Ray Pettis in the Valley. Ray Pettis here in Austin. I've got Rain Chavez. Well, there's a lot of people that I can continue to name to say, yeah, we want it. We want it. They'll call us uh, starving artists. For nothing, you know. Sometimes we have to sacrifice certain things, you know. Sacrifice a lot of sleep. <laughs> mm-hmm. I sleep and I'm dead. Movie making did save my life. It's given me a chance to express myself and share. Also, tug on the heartstrings of 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 the masses in the form of my storytelling. I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. With, you know, essentially, that this show is going to shine a light on up and coming artists, new artists, people that nobody really hears about in mainstream media but um what what does your intuition say about this what we're doing what you and I are doing what we're beginning with regard to shining the light on on up and coming artists and film directors not just the the superstars that are already self-made but but those who who should get more attention what's what's your feeling this is a platform that a lot of people need a lot of people have been working hard, probably harder than myself at times, and not gained the recognition that uh, is very well deserved. There's so many creatives out there doing so many beautiful things. They do need the spotlight sh- shined on them. And like Gandhi says, you know, be the change that you want to see. I want to conclude this first segment with JT Campos, actor, stuntman, multi talented. Uh, person on the Honda show. You're listening to the Chicano Radio Network Live. Stay in tune and you will be hearing more from JT Campos with regard to his thumb and pulse in Austin Entertainment. Aquí estamos con la onda and I'll tell you my onda later. Thank you, DD Blaze, for having me. I know you're blazing it up and lighting the light <laughs> of fire all around the world, man. <laughs> que onda. Que Dios te bendiga, Didi. Muchísimas Thank gracias. You. Thank you.